Hi, and welcome to the podcast series with podcastmybusiness.com.au. And today we have Maria Pelicano, and that is Maria and Pelican with a double L and an O dot com. So is that how you explain it to people? Pelican, yes, sometimes I say that. Um, yeah. I, I do like birds, and that's why I say pelican. But otherwise, it doesn't really feel it doesn't feel good. But yes, I have said that before. There you go. Okay. Now, Marie is joining us today for something really interesting, and really exciting, and that is about your voice. Maria is a voice coach, and mm-hmm. certainly, if you're doing podcasts, voice is critical to success. It totally is. It is critical. And important so do... to give it a go at least because I think it's a bit um, confronting for a lot of people when we talk about their voice. Mm. Why do you find that? Well, I think the voice seems to be really connected to the soul. It feels like people, you know, are personally being assessed or critiqued when you talk talk to them about their voice and unless they give you permission, it feels that you can't really jump in and say things about people's voices. In fact, People don't usually tell you things about your voice because they can feel that it's it's personal and it, and it is taken personally quite a lot. So how does my voice sound? It actually sounds quite nice. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And so does yours. I mean, I think we're both clear, or you certainly are clear. Look, I'll fess up, I had acting training many years ago and voice was part of that and I was taught Mm -hmm. to project and I think I'm okay at that. (laughs) Yeah, you can project but the thing is it's probably the resonance that we're looking at. So it can be sitting up here a lot into the cheeks or it could be sitting Mm. at the back of the throat a bit fuller, deeper larynx, which is the voice box sits lower, the breath is deeper and so the tone is warmer which makes it just more soothing for people to listen to you. They might go to sleep listening to you, you see. So once upon a time. No, I'm joking. (laughs) Well, that's not bad. You could try some of that. Some of it. Well, yeah, exactly. Look, I've always known that pitch up and down and raising your tone and lowering it and luring people in with a softer voice. Even on the phone when you're talking to someone um, is pretty important. Yeah, I think you need to feel your voice, not just speak it. Don't just listen to it, but feel it. Yeah, I, I do that. I do a lot of the mmm and that. So if you're looking at doing podcasting, what do you think would be the most, well, from a voice perspective, the most important aspects when you're doing podcasts? Well, it depends on a person's voice, but I think everybody should do some warm-ups. Some simple little warm-ups that, you know, uh, make you connect with your lower voice, deep, like a lip trill. And I've actually got a lot of these on my YouTube channel, Maria Palicano YouTube channel. You could also go to my website and I've got six exercises that are really are there for free when you, when you sign up. You get free six exercises, and one of them is a lip trill. So you start with a warm up. So I'm starting deep, lower tone, and then I'm going all the way up into a squeaky area, and then back down again. And that's a really good way of warming up your voice and activating your breathing and your diaphragm control. Mm. That's what I like to get people to do as well. Something as simple as that, especially for men to do lower and higher. Yeah. 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 I I think for women it's, I don't know, is is there any difference? Well, we need to be able to mix our range. And what I mean by that is be able to access your chest voice, middle and head voice. Now, men have a middle voice, but women don't have a middle voice. They tend to speak generally at the top of their chest voice into the head voice, which the head voice is just a vibration. Now, when you can mix all three of those or two of them, blend them in and have a beautifully balanced voice, then you're going to speak with greater ease. The The quality will be more soothing. 
and it'll be closer to your natural voice and it's going to be able to project better and you're going to be able to pronounce better. So the whole thing is easier to hear, to hear, similar to having a great PA system set up a room for a presentation. What do we do? We have a sound engineer comes in, he sets up the PA so that when the person speaks, the sound is beautifully delivered. Sound is nonverbal, right? So it's very important. Mm. I've been told I don't need to use microphones. (laughs) Possibly. Possibly. But then you might be straining, so you've got to be careful. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly right. Yeah. You've got to be careful with your voice and the range of the voice. Now, I have a glass of water right next to me. Wonderful. Of course. Mm. And certainly when you're speaking on a podcast, Again, I like to make sure that people have a glass of water. I know that you would have a glass or a bottle of water without yeah. even mentioning it to you. Oh, for sure. I even used it today, didn't I, at one of our meetings that you were present at. So Exactly, and I followed up. I, I showed off by drinking from my glass of water that was next to me. So there you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because so water, it is very... voice is water. So when you're speaking, there's all these w- water molecules coming out of your mouth. So we're 90% water. That's what vocal cords are. And the more water you drink, the the stronger you'll be able to speak and the longer you could speak for a longer period of time. Mm. And certainly clearer as well because, again, does it remove the upper and lower or something or does it give you a more even pitch? No, it just just gives you more, yeah, I would say more of an even, less effort. So it takes less effort to make the sound. So you want to be able to just open your mouth and use your voice like you would use a sharp knife. Have you ever tried to use a blunt knife to cut a tomato? I've tried and nearly cut myself, so yes. Yeah, that's what a voice can be. It can be blunt sometimes. So it, it's not clear and it's raspy and it is really hard to use. And I think if somebody does that over and over, they have no comparison to what an excellent, easy, effortless voice can sound like. Now, it's interesting because, I mean, obviously um, people are familiar with public speaking and being able to speak, which is organizations like Toastmaster and the like. But I think specifically for voice coaching Mm -hmm. is not that, I guess, I'm not going to say common because I don't like to actually use that word, but less utilized. I think people think that by arranging their content and standing tall and, you know, a couple of tips that they know they need to project, they need to smile, they think that's going to fix your voice. Well, it doesn't fix your voice. It camouflages it. So, of course, those points are important, but not warming up your voice and trying to pull through with a happy smile or a tall body or open hand postures and gestures, they help. But nothing helps a warmed up, taken care voice. You know? Yeah, I, rem- I remember back when I started doing sales, it was, oh, make sure you smile on the dial. Really, really important. And, it and I think help. it does come It through. does help, but nothing helps. Even if I have to do any work at all I always warm up my voice first you know some lip trills some sirens even blowing in a straw with a straw in water this is all on my website if you want to have a look at it and you get these exercises and they're free resources and they just help you warm up your voice prepare your voice so then your gestures and your smile and your wonderful content and your personal confidence comes through because if your voice is raspy or it feels dead like it doesn't have energy in it or tired or limited forceful any of those it really sabotages all those other wonderful things that you have ready to go and if your body doesn't feel energetic like you feel tired you're not going to want to speak so you avoid it It's interesting you've got it here on your website and on your YouTube clip here. We remember words when they have emotion. I love using emotion, especially laughter. Um, 
because laughter is an emotion and people yeah. do respond to emotions. Yeah. Well, emotions help communicate the message because it stimulates the larynx and the vocal cords change density and appearance as such and they create a different sound because it's stimulated by the limbic system which is an emotion nerve system that travels to the voice box so it is important that we stay connected to our emotions and use them Mm. now i it's interesting i'm speaking a little bit differently to what i normally do because i've noticed that you are your it's the right word diction you're taking more of a breath and taking more time to get out your words rather than doing what I do, which is I tend to rush. Yeah, well, if I don't breathe at the right places, then it makes my mouth or my tongue get muddled up and and I feel like I'm not enjoying the communication either. So when my breath feels threatened, so the pausing allows you to breathe, what, you don't even breathe, you allow the air to come into you with the low diaphragm, comes into you, relaxes your body, you get to enjoy your speaking as opposed to rushing through it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think we're all used to rushing things through and um, I guess one of the challenges, again, when you're doing a podcast is people talking over each other and I think, yeah, you're right, slowing things down will probably reduce that from happening as well. And creating space and breath and respect for what the other person wants to say or allowing them time to reflect on what you just said. That's pretty good. Wow, okay. I I was relaxed then. Thank you. (laughs) You you put me in a relaxed state just talking about the voice because it is that important. It's a... You know, what is it, the pathway to the soul or reflection of the soul? Or? It's the organ of the soul. So so if your soul is feeling um, confused or if you feel, you know, just not lack of confidence and self-belief, it'll come out across in your voice. And if you don't have any control, it makes it even worse. <laughs> You're exactly, and I was going to interrupt you just deliberately to prove the point, but there you go. You stopped, so you are very good. So thank you for that. Um, and let's face it, we've all been through a huge amount of stress in the last few months. Um, so it's good to, I guess, I want to say go back to basics. Well, actually, no, what I'm going to say, going back to basics and getting control over your voice gets you control over yourself and control over your presentation. Yeah, I mean, control over your voice means, one, you respect your own voice and here you are delivering your voice to others, right? So we're delivering, we're not just delivering words, we're delivering emotion, expression, a part of you is being delivered and that's what I'm hoping my podcasts, why would you not, why would you do a podcast if you weren't interested, right? So take your time because speaking is what it's all about. That's what a podcast is. It's about speaking. And speaking is about sharing your presence and your soul with other people. Yeah, exactly. And I'm definitely going to, again, recommend you for people who want to do more full-time podcasting rather than these individual small sessions, because I think it's very much worthwhile. And Looking at your website, you've got the prices there, which is fantastic. I love when people have stuff up up front and you've got your free resources page. Great. Okay. So any particular tips you have besides the um, voice exercising? Yeah, the voice exercise. um, Probably the uh, the most important one is the breath and that the breath is deep into your diaphragm and that you're breathing deeply almost down to the hips and that you allow the air to go down deeply because as it sits deeper in your diaphragm, your larynx, your voice box sits lower, means there's more space in your mouth, your tongue is freer, your jaw is more open and you have a richer, warmer sound. If you don't breathe deeply, you're breathing too high, everything starts to get squished like this and my mouth is tighter and my jaw is tighter and my sound is reduced and my breath is stuck 
and it's blocking the communication, making it really hard. So breath is really important. And just then I showed you two different tones and those tones make the difference of feeling free or feeling restricted. Mm. It's all in the free resources too. Absolutely, and that's at mariapelicano.com. And I'm not going to say anything about the one that I have now. I lived overseas for a long time, so I don't I don't think I've got it as much. But the wonderful way of going up at the end of something. Hi, I'm Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> up talk. Yeah. They call it up talk, don't they? Up talk. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> the questioning anyway. tonality, you know, that never yes. lands. It feels like it's never completed. Yeah, and you're waiting for, and what's next? And there's nothing next. Cool. That could All be right. um, a fast heartbeat that causes that too, by the way. There we go. So Too much get in coffee? Touch with Maria. Is there such well I actually I only have one a day. I'm yeah. careful with my coffee. But mm. um yeah, you're probably right. I agree. All right. Thanks very much, Maria. And Thank you. Um, thanks for your time. All right. Thanks, Tony. Bye.